by being beautiful and useful. Rivers, lakes, harbors, and oceans are not always the best places to build. Tools and construction materials work better when they are above water and dry, but many types of infrastructure we depend on every day are built below water, including wharves, bridges, tunnels, and docks. How do they do it? Today, underwater construction can be accomplished by divers, but professional diving is dangerous, and the types of tools and equipment that can both function underwater and be safely used by divers are fairly limited. Remote underwater vehicles, ROVs, and other types of submersible equipment are a modern alternative, but they are expensive and are limited in what they can do. For these reasons, most underwater construction involves removing the water from the build site, so you aren't building underwater at all. In the construction industry, this is called dewatering and includes a variety of equipment and techniques used for safe and sound building in waterlogged areas where it would otherwise be infeasible or impossible to build. Challenges of building underwater Building on land can be difficult, but building underwater presents even more unique challenges. Some of these challenges include Finding suitable materials Many of the materials we use frequently on land like wood simply are not suitable for long-term underwater use. Dealing with water pressure, both during construction and over the life of a structure, the effects of water pressure play a pivotal role. Managing corrosion Undersea projects in coastal environments must take into account the corrosive effects of salt water. Materials used in underwater construction. When building in water, materials must be used that can withstand a variety of complications, including water pressure, corrosion, and erosion. The most common materials used in underwater construction include concrete. A special variety of concrete used underwater is able to set quickly despite water currents and fares well in salt water. Steel. Steel, typically enclosed by concrete, forms a strong structure for underwater buildings. Acrylic glass, resistant to sunlight, durable, and fairly rigid. Acrylic plastics are well suited to underwater construction. Since it is transparent, acrylic glass is used for underwater windows. With the right materials, construction companies are ready to use a variety of construction methods that make it passable to create impressive underwater structures.
Methods of underwater construction. Several major techniques have evolved over the years that enable construction companies and construction workers to build in bodies of water both large and small. Some of the most important underwater construction methods include caissons, coffer dams, driven piles, off-site building, float, and lower. Interestingly, all of these underwater construction methods have the same underlying goal, avoid building underwater. Instead, water is diverted or avoided in various ways during construction, an essential approach because it is nearly impossible to actually build in water. Thus, building underwater is more about finding creative ways to work around water and make structures that can withstand it after construction is completed. Caissons. Caissons are watertight structures that can be lowered into the water while preserving a dry environment inside. Inside of the dry interior of an open caisson, workers can dig down in order to reach a solid surface that the caisson will rest upon. Eventually, caissons become part of the foundation of a structure, often a bridge or a dam. While we don't often think of bridges and dams as underwater structures, the truth is that many of their important elements are underwater. Many massive bridges would not be possible without the large supporting towers that hold up the spans that carry people and automobiles across. While they all employ the same basic principles, several different types of caissons exist. Open caisson. An open caisson has no bottom and contains only vertical walls, which enables workers to dig at the bottom of it. Pneumatic caisson. A pneumatic caisson is similar to an open caisson, but compressed air is pumped in to keep water from seeping in. Box caisson. Unlike other caissons, a box caisson contains a floor, so it is lowered onto a pre-established foundation. While caissons are still used today, their utility is limited, so many situations call for the use of coffer dams instead. Coffer dams. Coffer dams are temporary enclosures that allow water to be pumped out, creating a dry environment for construction. As the name suggests, coffer dams work similarly to dams, preventing the flow of water from a particular area. A fully constructed coffer dam looks like a large, walled pit with water surrounding it. Coffer dams can be created from a variety of materials, including steel and rocks. 
The most basic type of coffer dam is made by simply piling up large amounts of dirt. However, these types of coffer dams often require some kind of reinforcement to prevent erosion. Coffer dams can be used to build a variety of structures, from wharfs and piers to partially or fully submerged buildings. Coffer dams are also used in the construction of permanent dams, for instance. Several coffer dams were erected to divert water from the Colorado River in order to build the Hoover Dam. Driven piles. When building foundational elements underwater, driven piles enable crews to create sturdy structures without having to remove any water at all. Piles, which look like long, vertical columns, can be driven into the ground using a powerful hammer, creating a stable foundation for underwater or overwater structures. You can imagine piles as similar to nails being driven into a piece of wood, except in the case of underwater construction. The piles are being driven into layers of soil or rock. In underwater construction, piles are most often made of steel, though they have a partially hollow interior. After the piles are placed, a tube is used to fill the inside of the pile with concrete, which displaces the water that was previously inside the pile. Concrete is able to set even when surrounded by water, and what remains at the end of this process is a steel reinforced concrete pillar with no water inside of it at all. Driven piles are one of the most cost effective ways to build foundational elements of underwater buildings, which need to be securely attached in place to prevent moving with the water's current. For example, driven piles were used to anchor Apple's stunning partially submerged store at Marina Base Ends in Singapore. Off site building, float, and lower. As we've made clear, the main goal of underwater construction is to avoid having to actually build underwater. As a result, one of the most common practices in underwater construction is off-site building. 
Structures are built and assembled off-site, sometimes using modular construction, and then transported to the construction site. Often, structures or pieces of a structure are floated out on or towed by barges, then lowered into place. Some pieces are lowered using their own weight while other pieces are loaded with weights that help them reach the seafloor. If necessary, water is then pumped out of a structure after it is lowered into place. One structure that was built in this way is the Utterin, a small hotel in Sweden that was built on shore then later submerged in the middle of a lake. The hotel's entrance is only accessible by boat. Although this method of construction can be expensive, it is significantly more cost-effective than building directly underwater, which involves complicated tools, skilled divers, and tremendous risks. All of these construction methods caissons, coffer dams, driven piles, and off-site building enable the creation of incredibly beautiful and useful underwater structures.